wolves in our western wilderness are part of the American heritage. But for decades, the animals were absent thanks to a man-made eradication. Now they're back again because of human intervention. And the state of Oregon is left trying to find a balanced way to manage the animals, which seem to have a polarizing effect on people. Clearly are people that do not think they believe or they have a, a right to exist, and there's others that would like to see them virtually everywhere they look. Russ Morgan is Oregon's wolf expert. He heads the program for the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and says he understands not everyone is happy the predators are back on the landscape. One of the groups voicing the loudest opposition is hunters. We already have some, some very troubled deer and elk populations, and the last thing we need is another um, another piece of large piece of the pie taken out. Lance Podolsky is one of the Southwest directors for the Oregon Hunters Association. He says wolf packs have already changed what's available to hunt in the northeast part of the state. Yeah, the elk are not uh, where they've been in the past. They're not up on top. They're not in the open much at all, if at all. Um, they're down in safety on the sides of the canyons and in the thick, thick, thick timber. And uh, it wasn't that way not too long ago. In other words, the prey is getting smarter, and hunters like Podolsky are coming home empty handed, which isn't just bad news for those looking to bag an elk, it's also hard on the state. ODFW's funding comes almost entirely from tags and fishing license sales. This week, state biologists have confirmed OR7, Southern Oregon's celebrity wolf, has found a female. And the idea of a pack in Southern Oregon is something hunters have been worried about. Of course, we're fearful of that in Oregon. Uh, we've already seen some impact on the northeast, in the northeastern quarter of the state where they have established packs. And so, yes, of course, we're you know, very concerned about the rest of the state. Right now, the animals are state protected in the eastern part of the state. And here in the west, they're also federally listed endangered species. Podolsky believes Oregon, like other states, will eventually see the delisting of wolves, followed by the opportunity to hunt the animals as a form of population control. They're very difficult to hunt, as I understand. And, uh, it, you know, it, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that would like to get a tag for that. In Idaho, hunters killed 356 wolves in 2013 alone. The year before, they harvested 329. Wildlife advocates here say they're not ready to take a position on hunting wolves, but will say they want to see the federal listing stick. We need a fair and balanced plan to manage wolves, and federal uh, endangered species listing gives us that fair and balanced plan. It um, allows, you know, uh, a range of options for the whole Pacific Northwest, an area where wolves are just beginning uh, to return. However, hunters say our responsibility as wildlife managers is to provide protection for all animals, predators, and prey alike. Once humans have entered the landscape, we kind of have to take the ball from that point and, and oversee everything and manage it. Podolsky says places like Yellowstone have seen the wolf population decimate elk and deer herds. And he argues it's something we can't afford here. However, up at Wolf headquarters, Morgan says not so fast. He says every state is different, and Oregon is already in the process of collecting data to see just how wolves are affecting our natural lands. To just say because we have wolves, our, our elk populations will go down or deer or whatever is, is probably not based on solid science. Covering your news in southern Oregon, Caitlin Conrad, News 10.